What the hell? Hey, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> yep, yeah, that's how we're doing this. There we go. Back down a little bit, though. Up the opening music. What's happening, everybody? Yes, right. Still not on YouTube. And didn't realize until I was trying to set everything up that uh, my normal setup when it comes to utilizing the software that is Streamlab. I couldn't do anything on there because it is logged in through my YouTube and I didn't want to like log out and log in with like Twitch to log in with, I don't know. It, it was like one of those things where I'm like, so no, I didn't even have, I didn't even record an open on this, but yeah, still in freaking YouTube. I don't know, I mean, I don't have to worry about saying anything, right? Um, Fucking no, nah, well it's not like I did on YouTube anyways, but there's always that weird thing where it's like, oh don't don't drop any cuss words if you're opening your videos, but then you can. I don't know. Again, I'm just rambling, went off on tangent. Squirrel. No, but um yeah, so I had to like uh, I would I would have had to like log out and then log into like I don't know. I didn't want to do it and I was like, you know what, screw it. We're just gonna do it like this. And I'm using stream uh StreamYard, so that's why there's no Anything else? Anyways, who's out there? Anybody who's showing some love? What's going on, Lane? The show goes on. It goes on, baby. You know, not going to stop. Not going to stop. What's going on, Shane? Good to see you. Hoi, hoi, Mr. Uh, Jason McKenzie. We got you, Jason, also right here as well. Always good to see you guys. Like I said, I don't know how many people are going to, like, watch this live. But, hey, you know, it's whatever. Still going on. Still going on. Who else we got? We got Axel right here. Good to see you, buddy. All right, so yeah, so yeah, just gonna be using StreamYard right now because, man, I don't know. I was hoping, I was hoping, guys, I was really hoping that I might have got a response back from YouTube today, but sadly, did not. Did not. What is going on there, Mr. Jose? Good to see you. How are those Dodgers doing? Well, they won yesterday, but they've been struggling a little bit. Just saying. Uh, anyway, so yeah. Yeah, still uh, in YouTube prison, whatever the hell. Hopefully I can, I, I was really hoping. I was, I, we don't even know, guys. Like, I was, I had my Gmail just up and ready for any for, for a notification for anything. And I kept, anytime I got a, a Gmail notification, I was like, let it be it. Still nothing yet. So I think now that I didn't hear anything today, I'm going to have to start, uh, I'm going to have to start, like, reaching out. I don't know. It's. I'm wondering when they're gonna actually respond to me to know like what's going on with the channel. It sucks. It sucks, man. It definitely sucks. But just trying to, uh, you know, do whatever I can. And like I said, guys, really pushing, really pushing all the other stuff, all the other platforms right now. Obviously, you guys are either watching on Twitter or Twitch, which, you know, obviously you're probably following. But like I said, the Patreon's where it's at. That's where I've been throwing up a lot of the, uh, that's where I've just been throwing up. No, that's where I just been putting all any kind of videos right there. And I updated the tiers. So, you know, like I said, any kind of support when it comes to that, I'm really just pushing the page around, which I've been wanting to do. And I think like uh, being in uh, YouTube jail just kind of helps. Like I said, you could subscribe for free, perfectly fine. Uh, but of course, if you do one of the paid tiers, you're going to get all the stuff early. Everything early. You got the dollar one, which you're going to get videos early. But then, of course, you got the $3 one. And then you got the $6 one, which are just different things. Updated them and everything. And uh, I'm going to start, uh, you know, really diving into all that. Really diving into all that. And I uh, just, I again, it's just could jump it in the Monday. I still haven't like fully because there's like a thing when it comes to the $6 tier that I'm going to I'm going to start tomorrow that I was like thinking about. And I implemented. I'm not going to implement it quite yet because you know it's just monday and i didn't get that much sleep last night ah so i'm a little sleep deprived yeah just going on a sunday going into monday i was like Ugh. yeah stupid sleep is all off anyways appreciate you guys appreciate you guys yeah 10 yeah you know what's funny is like one of my really good friends he's a mets fan and he goes oh yeah the mets are just gonna use all the mets were they weren't trying hard on that one i was like well that was kind of funny what's going on butter chicken i like your uh 
I like your name. Sleepy Dave. I know I'm a little, yeah, like I said, it's just didn't get much sleep last night. So, so what the fuck is the reason they gave you again? Uh, like I said, they said that I, I violated so many community guidelines, but I have no idea which ones. And that doesn't even make sense. And then of course, when it came to the circum, what is it? The circumsection? <laughs> I always forget what that circumvention as if I, I tried to bend, I tried to avoid the rules by doing other crazy stuff, which I did not. And like I said, I mean, this happened when it come to the vo when it came to the vodka stream, and when it came to uh, somebody that reached out to me who has a big following, he got the same thing the same day earlier, and he got reinstated. He got exactly the same thing, the same response, same everything, and had no idea. So he got re re reinstated into uh, you know. It, Everything is back when it comes to his channel. So, yeah, it's just it's such a crazy it's it's such a crazy thing. But, you know, right now it's just like I just got to roll with the punches and keep the show going. What's going on, Chris? I was going to see you, my friend, my friend. So, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and do this show. Who else we got? We got. Yeah, we got. OK, I thought that was somebody else. So we got somebody. Here. Sorry, but Rebel Moon 2 Part 2 is awful. And I'm a Snyder fan. OK, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, the sheer meltdowns that I'm seeing, that's where I go, whoa, people. I mean, there are, I, there, I've seen stuff when it comes to Rebel Moon Part 2. Okay, you didn't like it. I mean, you're a Snyder fan. There had to be things that you had to like on it. Did you not like the whole thing? Because there's very much a lot of Snyderisms in there. If you didn't like how the story went and everything, and we're going to talk more about all this stuff. But uh, at the same time, I'm just kind of going like, man, I've seen people where, they uh they you could tell that they're not true Zack Snyder fans because they want to capture you know the the time between I guess you could say 2016 to 2021 I guess you could say I've seen people just like oh yeah Zach needs Larry Fong he needs Chris Terrio and blah 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 because they didn't like Rebel Moon so they're saying like oh what he needs is those two and it's absolutely ridiculous. I'm like, and I just see that stuff and I go, you know what? You're not actually a Zack Snyder fan then. You know, it's okay to be. And I think there's like when people are not happy with it, who are Zack Snyder fans, I think there's so much a fan that they're so disappointed that they didn't like these versions of the movie that they go off to. And I'm just like, okay, you're okay. I, to me, it's like, all right, maybe you're just such a fan that you're just so disappointed that you're going to go and just have like, and say ridiculous stuff on social media about it because you're so disappointed. But at the same time, it's like you got to take a step back. Take a step back and realize we still got the director's cuts coming, which we're going to be talking about a little bit more. And I know not everybody's agreeing with everything that's happening with that. And we'll, again, we, we're always about instant gratification. That's the bad part nowadays. Nowadays, it's all about instant gratification. Everybody just wants to love everything instantly or whatever the hell. And it's kind of funny, too, because back in December when the first Rebel Moon came out and there was mixed reviews and people didn't want it, like say it or want it or whatever, you're like didn't really care for it or whatever the hell, whether you're part of the Snyder Phantom or not. And then they said, like, oh, yeah, is there going to be any hype or any kind of whatever when it comes to Rebel Moon Part 2? And then we've been talking about Rebel Moon Part 2 for the last two weeks and we're still talking about it because the conversation is still there. So when it comes to the director's cuts, it's still going to be the same way because everybody's going to wa watch the director's cuts because, yeah, they're going to want to see what the director's cuts are actually all about after watching these. You know, it's it's a it's a weird strategy. Like I said, it's something different, something new. But that's Zach for you. He's doing something different, something new. So you know, that's it's just it's very interesting to see a lot of this stuff. But like I said, when I see people that think that Zach needs the people that that uh, were with him, of course, during the DC, the DC Snyderverse. It just, that just proves 100% that I'm like of the theory that we've been talking about for so long is, oh yeah, they aren't actually Zack Snyder fans. They are Zack Snyder DC fans. Okay. And they're not DC fans. They're only Zack Snyder DC fans. It's like, okay, so you're not really a fan of like, you know, that. And I'm all, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm biased and I'll say that 100%. Always that that I am biased because I really like the dude. I like what he what he does. I like that he doesn't do the same thing 
over and over again. Like he's just like, okay, he, he changes it up. He tries new things. And this is very much a new thing and a new strategy. And I'm just kind of like going, all right, I'm just going to be patient to see when we get to those director's cuts. And then we could see exactly if this strategy or whatever the hell like actually pays off. That's just, that's just me right here. That's just me. That's just me. And, but I'm just saying like, man, like relax a little bit, relax a little bit when it comes to this. Some people are just flat out telling people that uh, you're wrong for, for actually liking it, you know? And I'm just like, nope, that's not a way to do it. Not a way to do it. That's not what, when we started, you know, doing this whole thing, that's not exactly uh, what the hell. All right. So let's get to some tweets here. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? All right. Trying to like, oh yeah, I got to do use StreamYard this this time, and it's not as easy as the other. Okay, so okay, yep, don't have the background up. Let me have, let me get that background. There we go. We got the background up. All right, guys, we're gonna start off right here. When it comes to uh, hey, we got a new look at Furiosa. We got Anya Taylor Joy. We got some stuff right there. I think there was more things. We'll talk about this and talk about that and talk about those and talk about this and talk about that. Um, let's see. What There was something else I wanted to... Uh, where was it? Did I skip it? There it is right here. Speaking of Furiosa. So we had that shot of Furiosa, but then we also have this right here. There is a 15-minute action scene that took us 78 days to shoot. That's right. Took them 78 days to shoot that required nearly 200 stunt workers that's what i'm talking about george miller he's going to show people again just like he did with fury road on how to shoot an action movie he's gonna school everybody and i've even seen some of the responses too it's like oh, it seems like a bit excessive it's like well, now if you have a clear vision and you need to achieve it, I'm sure it was stressful as all hell. But again, it's like, well, look what happened with Fury Road. I mean, it was successful. It won awards. It did all kinds of, and changed the game. George Miller is still changing the game. And if we're going to get some crazy 15 minute action sequence, hey, guess what? I think a lot of us would be for that. You know, I, th I mean, the first comment that I see under the tweet, is that seems excessive. It's like he's trying to give you a gold, like a fucking product that you're going to walk away going, holy shit, you know? So it's like, um, I don't think that's a bit excessive. That's just George Miller going, I'm going to achieve this. I have a vision and I'm definitely bringing it to life and we're going to achieve that. And I'm sure it was a big pain in the ass, but man, George Miller, gotta love that guy. Gotta love that guy. Okay, what else we got? All right. Well, we got this right here. Uh, where was it? I, did I pass it again? Yes, right here. So we got the new Alien movie coming out. And um, Alien Romulus. And apparently, according to uh, Deadline right here. And this is, this is, this is, this is d difficult because I don't have my little thing. I just hit a button. But yeah, we got, uh, according to uh, Deadline right here, we got Alien, the Alien series that's coming out. Now, okay, not Alien Romulus, but the Alien series that is coming out from Noah Hawley. It's going to be 30 years before the events of the original Alien movie. So, so we get a little prequel. So it's actually a prequel, which is interesting. So I'm like, what is actually going to, is going to be within all of that? See, I just, that's where I go. Like, I start scratching my head. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Hey, is anybody going to be excited for this? Probably not, because who cares? But hey, Space Mountain is going to be a movie. That's right, guys. Space Mountain at Disneyland, they're turning it into a movie. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to be doing, but they got a couple of writers, and somehow they're going to convert this roller coaster ride that you just kind of go through that is. A, a very it's not even the, the best roller coaster ride i mean it was one of the first roller coasters i've ever been on i will say because you know disneyland obviously as a kid i rode Sp space mountain and that was like the most like oh 
It's like, oh, there, there's a roller coaster ride. I've never been on like a super fast roller coaster. So as a kid, I did that. Uh, me and Mama Film Junkie in there. I remember like this was, I don't know, even remember exactly when it was some back in the 90s, back in the 90s. But I'm like, how do you turn this into a fucking movie? Like Pirates of the Caribbean, I understand. But Space Mountain? Space Mountain? All right. I guess. <laughs> Like, what's happening here? All right. Well, I don't know. It's all just pretty crazy. Did you guys see this? Oh, this is pretty funny. Did you guys know that Oscar Isaac was in a ska band in the early 2000s? That's right. I had no idea. But this video showed up on Twitter, and I was like, what? He's a lead singer. Lead singer, Oscar Isaac of a ska band. Check this out. There he is. Oh, Little did they know that this guy was going to be like, you know, like the biggest movie in about 15 years. 10, 15 years. Look at him go. Look at him go. Look at him go. <laughs> I just love that because nobody in the crowd knows that the lead singer of this ska band is going to be in a Star Wars movie, is going to be in Dune, is going to be in X-Men Apocalypse, Plane Apocalypse, is going to be, well, I mean, Ex Machina, underground cult hit. But, I mean, it's just crazy that people in that crowd had no idea that the lead singer was going to end up being in some of the biggest movies. Crazy to think about. But there you go. I had no idea. I, never, I was never a big ska guy. You know, I, I never, I always thought ska always sounded the same, you know, when it came to the uh, the brass. I mean, I don't, I, I, I'm okay with it, but I just never got into it that much. I'm like, eh, I don't need brass in a, in a rock band. I don't know. It was just, I was, that's just me, though. I was just never a big ska guy. Never a big ska guy. And then we got this right here. Okay, so we had the Joker party. We had the Joker party, and now we have, well, the Batman party from the same animators. Oh, man. Tell you what, they opened up the pool, guys. So if you hear some children screaming in the background, I swear they're not, you know, they're not in here. They're out. My, the pool is right out there. Okay. I'm not. Anyways. <laughs> I just like, oh yeah, they opened up the pool this week. I'm like, great. Cause it's getting hot, but check this out. Probably shouldn't play that. I mean, look at all that, but we got all the bat, the bat men right here. There's Adam West, there's Battinson, there's Batgirl even, and of course Michael Keaton, you got everybody here. Nobody's left out this time, and you got Batman and Robin. Nobody's left out this time like the Joker one, so that's pretty cool. I thought that was pretty sweet. From the same uh, DM, Galloway, he did the, uh, the Joker one too. Ah, crap. So, yeah. So I'd show you guys that. What else we have? Hmm, okay, so one of my favorite all-time movies when it comes to action, the action genre, is Face Off. John Woo, Nicolas Cage, uh, John Travolta. I watched it. I shit you not. I watched it probably a week ago. And yes, there has been talk. There, there, there's been this development. This okay. First, it was like supposed to be a remake of Face Off. Then now it's like now a sequel. Apparently, it's Face Off Two. And now, according to Daniel RPK, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage are going to be showing up in Face Off 2. So, yep, right there. I don't know. Geek Vibes Nation reported that. Okay. If it's going to be a sequel, I mean, if, you, if you're familiar with the story of Face Off... I would say that when I, when I was watching it, I even thought, well, okay, so if they were to do a sequel, I mean, obviously Sean Archer, John Travolta's character, is still alive. Did we see Caster Troy die 
when they were reversed. I love that's so I love about face off. It's so it, it's a ridiculous concept, but you know, they could have just did the whole like, hey, it's magical and we do that switcheroo thing like it's, you know, Freaky Friday or something like that. Or like father, like son, you know, they could have done some magical thing, but they decided to do like this crazy sci-fi procedure where they just like, Hey, you guys are almost, you guys almost look the same, but we're going to put your face on him and his face on you. So it's a little bit different, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, but in the story, within the story, it's a little bit, it, it is kind of weird, but at the same time, you got, you got the, the character of Sean Archer who loses his kid who Castle Troy kills because he tried to kill Sean Archer when they were like on a playground, a merry-go-round, a carousel, I guess you say, tries to shoot him, kills the kid. So for like the next decade, Sean Archer is trying to get Caster Troy, finally gets him, thinks he kills him, but no, he didn't. And then there's a bomb that's going to wipe out LA. So he has to turn in to Caster Troy to talk to his brother who's in prison. And then obviously Caster Troy wakes up, puts Sean Archer's face on, and is now running all that. And then now the Sean Archer Caster Troy version has to escape from prison, goes to the lair, finds out that Caster Troy has a kid who's the same age as his kid. It's so hard to explain. Try try explaining this at the dinner table. The, 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 the <laughs> face off. Try to explain that. I try to explain this to the ex and we try to watch it. She wasn't having it. That's the thing. That's one of the reasons why we didn't last. Just kidding. No, that's definitely not. But I remember I did try to sell this movie to her. We started watching it. We probably got 26 minutes in and she was like, no. <laughs> Anyways, but at the end, so basically Sean Archer, he, man, I'm going off on a whole thing here because I love this movie so much. Sean Archer basically adopts Caster Troy's kid. So it's like, okay, the sequel should be a revolving around that because it's like, that could be something right there. I'm just kind of wondering how, but how does Nicolas Cage come in? Because did Caster Troy really die? Or is he just going to put his face, did they put his face back on and then he didn't? I don't know. Anyways. <sighs> explanation over with and questions and whatever the hell you want to say. Yeah. I went off a lot on that one, but I love that movie so much. It's my, one of my favorite action movies. John Woo, baby. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let's keep going. Of course, we're going to be talking about Deadpool. Oh, we got this right here. Patrick Totopoulos. You guys know who Patrick Totopoulos is, right? He's been on. I've interviewed the guy and other people have interviewed him when it comes to everything that happened with the Snyderverse, because yes, he is the production designer of, of course, Batflex, Batmobile, BVS, Justice League, designing all that, designing the vehicles and everything like that. So according to him, well, or according to like this link right here and according to, well, Rebel or Snyder Netflix updates, Patrick Totopoulos, of course, who did all that states, he will collaborate with Snyder again as the new production designer of Rebel Moon 3 when greenlit after being asked to by Zach. So Dan Lin has to, uh, you know, green light that first. And I know some people are going, that's not going to happen. And I'm just kind of going like, well, I'm just going to say fingers crossed. And I know there's people out there that are like, I hope it. I mean, I literally had to respond to somebody that said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want them to green light it. And I'm like, well, you don't have to watch. it. <laughs> it's just one of those things again, when, when I'm seeing the response to this from people who are, you know, like Snyder and they're just very disappointed on what they've seen when it comes to rebel moon. It's like, hey, okay, if, if there is a green or if there is a, I almost said green lantern, I don't know why. If there is a rebel moon part three, you don't have to watch it. That's what's crazy about these movies. You don't have to watch it, but hopefully it does. And we get some pretty cool designs from Mr. Totopolis right here. All right, let's see what else we got that I want to show you. Okay, so we got this right here. Dwayne Johnson. All right, so Dwayne Johnson is now putting WrestleMania behind him. Obviously, he's make a he's made a big splash when it comes to WrestleMania, which good for him. That's he needed a couple of W's. I, at first, I thought people weren't liking him back into the whole wrestling scene, but 
again, I don't understand wrestling, and it was all just part of the, the shtick of him coming back and everything. But apparently he's putting that behind him, and now he's going to get into the MMA cage, and he's starting his new venture of playing this uh, this character, which is, uh, what's the character's name? That's Not character, but a real-life MMA fighter uh, who is Mark Kerr. I have no idea like this guy's story, and I remember him talking about this, especially on Rogan's podcast. He talked about that. But uh, so now he's putting WrestleMania behind him, and now he's gonna get into the he's gonna get into MMA fighting shape right here. And I will actually start a new training camp tomorrow on Monday, and this training camp now starting today will consist of MMA fighting in the cage. So I've gone from the pro wrestling ring to the MMA cage. And it's in preparation for my next movie. It's called The Smashing Machine. As many of you know, The Smashing Machine is based off of the life of Mark Kerr. Mark Kerr was the godfather, the heavyweight godfather of MMA, of UFC, um, who at one time was the greatest fighter on the planet. And he was greatest fighter on the planet. Okay. Cool. I'm intrigued because it's an A24. It's an A24. And after, you know, a couple of few years of Dwayne Johnson kind of getting some L's, you know, when it came to DC stuff and other stuff too, and trying to break away from other franchises and shit like that and kind of be, I'm intrigued. I hope he dives into this head fucking first. It's going to be interesting to see. He's probably going to lose some mass if he's going to, well, I mean, I've seen what the guy looked like. I look, I looked up what he looked like, and I'm like, okay, I could see Dwayne Johnson playing him. Maybe he won't lose that much mass, but he's not gonna. But if he's gonna have a regimen of mainly a lot of fighting and grappling and all that stuff, he's probably gonna like, you know, he's probably gonna slim down a little bit to be in part of that. But I'm actually very intrigued because regardless of sometimes I've been saying, you know, especially when it came to the DC stuff and and the ego of Dwayne Johnson and some of the things just like, I still like the guy. I still like the guy. If he were to run for president, I'd probably still vote for him, but I'm just, I'm very intrigued on what happens with this. And maybe this could be something where it's like, Whoa, Dwayne Johnson showing some acting chops because it's eight twenty four. Right now. We'll see. Emily Blunt's going to be in it. Apparently. All right. Is this true? Is this true? <laughs> I don't know if the, it's like, <laughs> it, it, it's funny to me because I remember hearing about them having to have to do this when it came to the first alien movie. And obviously if you watch the first alien movie, the end when Ripley is like, Oh, everything's all good. Everything I'm on the, I'm on the rescue vessel. Everything's good. But the alien is of course on the rescue vessel. I mean, they really were like, okay, you're going to be walking around wearing a you know a tank top that is very short no bra and panties that are very low that's right it's one of those where you kind of go i mean sigourney weaver who did not have a crush on sigourney weaver i definitely did and then when you watch the scene you're kind of going like holy crap she is like especially the uh the panties and apparently they had to uh it would they were so low and it was the 70s that uh grooming wasn't really a thing so they had to take the film and remove things because their panties were so low that they weren't sticking out of the of the panties and i don't know according to pallets pallets wap mag i don't know if it's true but when they restored it because maybe yeah they couldn't exactly not the remaster painstakingly adds Sigourney Weaver's bush back in. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, the 4K remaster, you get the bush back in there, guys. You get some Sigourney Weaver bush. Sigourney Beaver. <laughs> oh my God. That is hilarious. I, I I just saw that. I'm like, is that true? That, that's hilarious. That I, I, even if it's not true, it's hilarious. To me, that's true. I don't. To, not to, I don't know. It's just, I just, it just made me laugh. Just made me laugh. Just made me laugh. 
Um, all right. So I got a question for you guys who was uh, who are watching right there, and I want your honest opinion because I asked this last night because I in fact did reheat some pizza. I, I got a pizza on uh, Saturday. I was like, you know what, fuck it. I feel like a pizza tonight, and uh, went down the street. There's this cool, this nice little hole in the wall place, which are always the better ones. Got a pizza. But uh, there's always been like a, a debate on exactly how do you reheat your pizza? And I asked on Twitter last night, I'm like, how do you reheat your pizza? Because obviously, even growing up, and a lot of us probably just, yeah, you just stick it in the microwave. Oh, no, you put it like a, you put a paper towel over it, or maybe even a moist paper towel and you put it in the microwave. But anytime you put it in the microwave, totally the wrong way to do it because it always comes out shitty. It sucks. And the dough gets all rubbery and soft and... It's just not the way to do it. Not the way to do it. So when I put it out there, a lot of people were like, oh, this is how I do it. This, a lot of people said the oven. Just stick it in the oven for about six to ten minutes or something like that. Hey, also good because that's what they do at pizza joints. You get a slice. They'll stick it in the oven for about a minute or two just to warm it back up again. Yes, better way to do it because, again, the microwave is bullshit. If anything, you shouldn't even be putting any food in the microwave because – it's horrible. It's it's literally if you have some nutrients in that food, it's probably going to zap those fucking nutrients and fuck up your food. It's not it's radiation. It's actually ridiculous. I can't even remember the last time I used my microwave. It's still there. But I'm like, yeah, it is the, the worst way to the heat food. So when it comes to reheating pizza, and I saw some people even say put it on a pan put it on a frying pan or a skillet or whatever. And I saw people say like, put some oil down, cover it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. Or put some water down, cover it. And I'm like, yes, you guys are there. This is what I do. This is what I do. And try this next time. Don't, you know, you could put some oil. I haven't tried that yet. I'm sure that'd be good. You know, some olive oil, avocado oil, you know, one of the good oils, the water thing. Okay. Interesting. But why not butter, butter, put some butter on the pan, melt that butter put it on low heat and then stick your slices on there. I had, I had multiple slices, you know, I had some left over. I had like four slices or something like that. And I had it like my, my, uh, cast iron pan. I was like, all right. So I melted the butter, low heat, put it on there because you don't want to burn your crust. You want to burn your crust or at least the bottom part. So you let, you cover it. You let that butter just like soak in. You get a little bit more of a crisp and then you get that cheese to melt just a little bit. Don't over melt it. Just let it melt just, just, just enough. You don't need to make it where you're like scraping it off the pan. It was better than when I got it from the fucking pizza joint. Like before I, I, I used to do like the same thing, but I, but I had the, I had the, uh, the stove on too high, but I did it at a low heat and I let it just be in there for about seven, eight minutes. And it came out better than it was the night before. So there you go. Try butter. But like I said, you know, there's the oils, the cooking oils. Just use like a good one, like a, like an olive or a avocado. I haven't tried that yet, but butter is a good way to do it too. I'm just saying. But yeah, a lot of people even said air fryer, like Jason said right there. Yeah, air fryer. Yep, that's a good way to do it too. So, huh, all right, sorry. I had, uh, had to talk about that. It was, a, it was a good discussion on Twitter, you know? Aaron Taylor Johnson, stop asking him if he is going to play 007 James Bond. The guy doesn't want to hear it anymore. He's constantly asked if he's the new 007, apparently. Yes. And I'm tired of hearing about it, too. Because honestly, I don't... Because honestly, I don't really actually see him as a 007. I don't know. I guess I'll have to... I don't know. I just don't really see him. As, I, I get it, but... I don't really actually see it. I don't know. Aaron Taylor Johnson on if he has been offered the role of James Bond. You sick of asking that question? Have a good one. He basically said, fuck off. He basically said, fuck off. He's like, you're going to ask me that again? I'm tired of answering it. He's sick and tired of being asked about if, he, if he's been offered 007. So stop asking them, people. Stop it. 
See, that's what's got to be kind of annoying when you get asked when when there's like a big role, no matter what it is, if there's like a big, like huge role that you might be up for and you're rumored and they keep on talking about it. You're going to get asked that over and over, over and over again when it comes to interviews. It's just the way it is. And he's tired. Sorry, I had an itch in my nose. All right, what else we got? I think that's pretty much it when it comes to uh, all that. Uh, let's see, is the YouTube channel back yet? Wouldn't that be funny if it happened live? If it happened live, because I have the tab open where it has that red strip. This is the tab I have open right here. So this is what I've I've been refreshing pretty much all day. Is that right there. There you go, guys. There's my channel. And it has the red strip. This account has been terminated for violation of YouTube's terms of service. So I keep on refreshing. You know, obviously, I probably get an email first from YouTube letting me know that hopefully it's reinstated. But if I don't hear from them, I don't know. I'm going to have to start bugging tomorrow. I'm going to have to start. I mean, no matter what, I'm going to, I mean, going to put up a fight, of course. So. I'm going to have to put up a fight. Anyways, okay, let's talk about uh, the main topic. Let's talk about some uh, Superman and DCU stuff. What do we got here? All right. Well, obviously, the first thing, when it comes to Superman, I mean, the first things first is like, you know, when it comes to, hey, we got a Superman face, and we obviously got David Cornsweet out and about, and we saw him, they're like, oh, yeah, he's looking pretty good. He's looking pretty good. But when it came to, obviously, the celebration of uh, the first issue of Superman, well, obviously Action Comics, when, uh, what, back in, I don't know how many years, it was like 86 years ago, when we get, uh, you know, we get this first image or we get this celebration, everybody was looking like, hey, is James Gunn going to post something? Some people thought he was going to post a suit. And I went, you guys are going, you guys are getting a little too crazy when it comes to the suit reveal. I don't think we're going to get the suit reveal for a while, and they shouldn't. Just keep teasing. Just keep teasing. So when it came to this day last week, it was like, no, they're not going to do it, but he's going to post something. And I think this was actually a good post to post because it's all about the comic books. So have them read the comic books. Good stuff. But everybody was kind of going like, what is going on? Corn sweat looks a little different. His eyebrows are, are, are brighter. They're not as dark. And there was like people just like examining his Superman face and kind of going, huh? I mean, obviously, he's got the hat on and everything. And yes, the eyebrows look a little weird. And some people are even claiming, like, because of the whole rumor that Ultraman's going to be in this movie, the Superman clone. So maybe that's why his eyebrows look like that, because he was actually shooting scenes as that. And I thought that was a little bit much. That's a bit of a reach. You're going to strain a muscle if you're going to reach like that. All I know is I can't wait to, uh, I mean, as much as I'm looking forward to seeing Corn Sweat in the role and in the costume and as the character, I cannot wait to uh, fall in love with Rachel Brosnahan. I mean, I'm already getting there. I'm already falling in love with her. She's just, but I, she's just, ha, ha, ha. She's, she, she's beautiful. And then just to see her in the role of Lois Lane, I, I just, I, I, yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to is, you know, falling in love with her. You know, I think a lot of us kind of are, you know, nothing against corn sweat. I mean, maybe I'll fall in love with him, too, but I I'm definitely falling for her. Obviously, on the set, there's a lot of blue screens everywhere. More blue screens, no green screens around there. Nothing but blue screens. It's looking like interesting. So we had that. Now let's go through some other updates. Um, obviously, James Gunn posted that talking about the celebration. Of all that, and uh, what else we got? Let's see. At the VFX department, they posted a picture. We got what's her name, Gabriella Maria, posing posing with uh, Ira the dog. She does a lot of posing, which I I don't I don't mind it when she posts stuff too because she's also gorgeous. Oh, just saying. Let's see. And then, okay, so let's see. When she, okay. So we got this screenshot right here from James Gunn on threads. I thought you were uh, still filming. Is it part of the normal filming process to edit the film while it's still shooting? 
Is it to get a sense of how the film is coming together and compensate for things which are not working as intended? James Gunn responded right here. When shooting a movie for five months, so they're shooting for five months, apparently, I'm sure give or take, it's really normal to edit. I can pick up shots if I need to, but more importantly, I can start turning shots over to VFX so they'll be awesome by the time we lock the picture. Most films are put into theaters with subpar effects because the edits were rushed. You hear that, Kevin Feige? Yeah. Jimmy Guns took some notes on what you fucks were doing, huh? Maybe. Because let's face it, that's what's been plaguing Marvel Studios in the past few years, right? Changes, too many changes, and then you got last-minute changes to the VFX. I've talked to VFX artists. They talk about that. And this is a good way to do it. And hopefully they stick to this plan and hopefully everything's working pretty well. I'm sure there's going to be either trials and tribulations as they, as there always is with movies. But the fact of the matter is, is like, yes, get everything going as you're going. It's good. That's good right there. But it almost seemed like it was like, hey, are you throwing a little shade over at Marvel Studios? He might be. He might be. Yeah, yeah, of course they're going to be like, ah, you know, Kevin Feige, oh, I love James. Yeah, I hope he does well over there, DC. <laughs> and James Gunn's like, oh, yeah, um, you know, Marvel Studios, they're doing good, whatever. Yeah, subpar VFX. We're not doing that over here. I didn't mean that from you guys. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? I don't know. I think I think there's some bad blood. I'm not going to lie. I think there's some bad blood there. I think there's a little bit. There's egos. They both have egos. Feige and Gunn, of course, have egos. They all have egos. I think there's a little bit of bad blood there. Maybe. Maybe a little bit. Could be wrong. <sighs> Let's see. Scripts and then, of course, uh, and then he posted this right here, which is actually pretty funny. And all this is like, uh, thank you to DCU Updates on Twitter. They they pretty much like get all this together. And I, you know, it's very, it helps for, you know, a chucklehead like me to just like talk about this stuff. But Somebody asked like uh, about another about what what else is going to be coming into production. Blink twice if production other than Superman or Peacemaker are getting uh, ready to film. And he posted this right here. Very creepy. Is that Rana Del Rey? Ooh, that's very creepy right there. But hey, you know, whatever works, I guess. <laughs> uh, any news about? Creature Commander, Creature Commandos, I should say. They said the anime. He says the animatics, all re recording and done, waiting for the first animated cut. So they're waiting for the first animated cuts. That's good. And uh, yeah, we're we'll talking about something too when it comes to uh, a certain other director. Uh, when we get to that point, whoop, whoop, where am I at here? Oh man, I lost my spot. I lost my spot. Where'd it go? There we go. All right, now we're good. Let's see what else we have. Eh, just answering people, which I'm good. He was actually answering like what comics he was reading and all that kind of stuff, which is good. He also posted this though, and a lot of people are going like, "What does this mean? Are we gonna see a symbol like this?" And I wouldn't be surprised if it'd be some kind of Easter egg. But the original Superman symbol right here, the emblem, he just posted that randomly, and of course everybody's like pulling out their jeweler's loop or their magnifying glass and going exactly, "What are you trying to say here, Jimmy Guns?" Are we going to see something like this? I wouldn't be surprised. Put a little Easter egg or something like that. Maybe. I don't know. So that's kind of cool. All right. And then we have Justin Howe, who, uh, of course, is uh, the lead stunt guy, who is basically David Cornsweet's stunt guy. And he was just interviewed recently. And, of course, he can only do so much, only say so much. This is on Be More Super. Let me Be More Super stream or podcast right here. And yeah, there is even mention that, yes, Superman should be wrapping up in July. But here we go and uh, listen to him talk about, well, wearing the Superman suit. Thor, Master Chief, and now you're donning the cape. Um, have you put <laughs> the suit on yet? I have, many times. Many oh. times. And, and, what, uh, and what is your impressions of the suit? It's, it's a very cool experience. I, I, yeah, I don't get that at all. I, <laughs> It's a very cool experience. I'm very excited for you guys to see it. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? I mean, for a for a performer like like yourself, having doubled like yeah. Thor and Mas Master mm -hmm. Chief, and now Superman, I mean, does it get any better than that? 
oh my god it this feels like the mountaintop for me this feels like a, a very very cool experience feels like the start of a new era the things james is doing with it are very interesting very cool I will say the suit is the most mobile of any of the other suits I've worn. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, Pat, there's no armor or anything. All right. Well, at least we got that. Very mobile. But then that makes sense because if you're doing Master Chief, there's a lot of armor. So obviously that'd be not. And then same thing when it comes to Thor. Apparently he's got Thor. There's some armor there too. So obviously when it comes to Superman suit, yeah, there's not going to be really much armor. But I mean, yeah, it's just crazy. As a stunt guy, and again, you know, this is why I, I love giving a shout out to stunt performers. I mean, they get to wear these costumes too. They get to actually do a lot of the action. I mean, let's face it. When it comes to my favorite Batman scene, the warehouse scene in BVS, most of it is not Ben Affleck. It's not Ben Affleck. It is Richard Citrone that is mainly doing that or Damon Car Damian Caro. You know, it's like, it's those guys that are mainly doing like a lot of that stuff too. And, ba and Ben Affleck just does the cool close-up shots and everything. But, you know, these guys get to wear these costumes too. So Mr. Justin Howe right here, apparently, you know, the top of the mountain wearing that Superman costume. That's pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. Let's see what else we got. Oh, we got our boy right here. All right. We got our boy Andy interviewing Hawk Girl, of course, Mr. Uh, Miss Isabella Merced, because she's got turtles all the way down for Max that's coming out. But naturally, Andy was like, "Hey, I gotta ask about Superman and Hawk Girl." Because you because you noticed my background, I was hoping to talk to you for a little bit about Superman. I know filming has started. How is filming been, filming been going for you? And is there anything you can tease about? But Hawk Girl, have you tried on your suit yet? You know, just I'm a comic book nurse, so, you know, I, I will take anything if you can give me. Oh, well, I have to say, like, your house kind of reminds me of Nathan Fillion's house. He has a Superman <laughs> doormat and like he has not an alarm. Uh, the doorbell actually plays the theme of Superman entering um, his. Oh, my God. What is it called? Not not Lair. It's called the the yeah. yeah that plays the theme when you walk into the house. And um, I'm really excited to work with him. He's a great Green Lantern casting choice. And Eddie Gatheggi is amazing as well as Mr. Terrific. Um, and we're going actually this Sunday, I think, to film the first stuff. In the suit, yeah. I'm hoping? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And what what other parts do you have coming that we can look forward to seeing you in? Because now you you know you dealt with a big project like Marvel and DC. So what 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 are, what are you hoping to do next? And what 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 do you have coming up next besides Superman? I'm in Alien Romulus. It's coming yeah. out in August, Busy. and uh, The Last Busy. of Us season two. I play Dina. It was an amazing movie. Thank you so much for you. Busy right there. She is busy. She is super busy when it comes to all this. But there you go. Obviously, she didn't talk about much. But you know. They're going to be filming something. I don't know exactly when this was recorded. I shouldn't ask Andy, but so maybe they've already uh, started that recorded. That probably wasn't, you know, who knows if that was out to ask him. But yeah, there she is. She's got like, uh, I don't know what's going on with it. She's almost like she has her own little Superman curl going on in the, on her head right there. I'm like, oh, OK, interesting. It's like, yeah, represent that Superman curl a little bit, huh? So good on Andy for doing that. And that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much it when it comes to any kind of, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to that. Let's put that over there. Oh, oh, did I mess up that? No, there it is. I'm trying to arrange stuff right here. So, yeah, there you go. Oh, it's weird because the chat's not as chatty <laughs> because it's not on YouTube. Uh, and then, of course, I'm not adjusting everything. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, I should probably hold on. There we go. Write down because this is all just I mean, we're doing it so raw, guys. This is like a raw. It's just, it's just raw dog film junkie live. I tell you raw dog and we're raw dogging it with the older tech, the uh, not so fancy technology, not on YouTube. It's all just so raw. How do you feel to be raw dog? Anyways, that's what we're doing right now. Anyways, so Deadpool. Deadpool and Wolverine, how are we feeling about it? Uh, I watched the trailer. I couldn't wait. I thought about waiting until uh, tonight's show, but I was like, nah, I can't. I got to watch it. I got to watch it. There's just no way that I was going to be able to wait that long. So obviously, let's kind of go through it right here, kind of break it down a little bit, because there is some things 
Uh, hold on. Let me. Uh, there's some uh, things that I that that are in here. That we'll break. That uh, we'll talk about, uh, and then we'll talk about some of the uh, posters and stuff that just came out too. But where are you? There you are. Chase. Okay. Oops. See, it's to, to go back to StreamYard with all this is just difficult. Difficult. All right. So, nope, not that. This right here. Okay. I told you, you're not welcome here. Right off the bat, people are even talking about how, like, uh, just the setting right here is reminding them of uh, the Wolverine game that's going to be coming out. It's kind of like the similar setting. You're not welcome anywhere. Now get the fuck out of my bar. Just give me one more drink and then I'll leave. I already just have bombs like crazy. Hi, Peanut. I'm going to need you to come with me right now. Look, lady, I'm not interested. Lady. All right, well, I'm sort of on the tick tick, so upsy daisy. Oh, whiskey dick of the claws. <laughs> I mean, that's hilarious. Whiskey dick of the claws. quite common in Wolverines over 40. You don't want this. And then I love how smile. Wait for the flash. Unless you want to take a deep breath through your fucking forehead, I suggest you reconsider. That's a pretty cool shot. But you know what sucks about this shot? Is it's plagued by the damn color palette that Marvel Studios always uses. I don't know. The, their, their, their color palette always... Ugh. I don't know. Some of this more of this... I'm about to lose everything that I've ever cared about. Not my fucking problem. Is that what you said when your world went to shit? Right, so, okay, right here, this looks like it's supposedly directly after Days of Future Past because he's wearing that white T-shirt. His hair is that short. I don't know. That was just what I was getting when it comes to this. I'm not sure exactly what's happening in this thing, but... Come again. This Wolverine let down his entire world. Oh, God. Does anybody else feel that? I felt that. Ah. I think that's... I want to talk about what's haunting you, or should we wait for a third act flashback? All right, so there's some interesting things happening on his head right there, and I'm like, what is... Okay. Maybe they're just moles. I don't know. Uh, go fuck yourself. See? See? We got a Wolverine. I mean, we already had a Wolverine drop an F-bomb when it came to first class. There you go. See, I, I remember there was, there was so many people. I saw so many people on Twitter. So many people on Twitter that were going like, wait, Hugh Jackman is like getting it back in the Wolverine shape and they put sleeves on him. And I'm just going... You don't think he's going to have some kind of shirtless scene or the, the sleeves are going to eventually come off? And sure enough, the sleeves are off. Look at those guns. Look at those guns. I was like, yeah, of course they're not going to keep them off. What are you kidding me? But they're so, I remember I would see comments under like underneath his workout videos. They're like, yeah, he's getting all this, or quote tweets, he's getting in this massive shape only to be covered up. It's like, did you not think that they would, Eventually, sh he's probably gonna have a shirtless scene too. Oh. Yeah, I don't know anything about saving worlds, but you do. Trust me. Yo, okay, then we got this right here. Life fields just feet. Obviously, talking about Rob Lifefield and the whole thing when it comes to feet. I don't fully know exactly the Easter egg behind that, but apparently, he can't draw feet. That's that's the the, the just the, the the most I know. He can't really draw feet, so they put that little Easter egg right there. Trust me, kid. I'm no hero. You were an X Man. You were the X Man. I am soaking wet right now. Ah, oh, come on! That just gives you goosebumps right there. Come on, that's a beautiful shot. He's in the yellow costume, and the freaking claws are coming out. Soaking wet right now. Yep. Okay, so then we get the what? Cat, uh, Cassandra Nova, who's like the main baddie right here. But if you notice right here, okay, so there is there a wheelchair behind her? Is there somebody in a wheelchair behind? I don't know. 
It's kind of interesting. Let's talk about it. It's pretty cool. That's pretty. It's so silly. All right, kind of wondering what that is when it comes to this storm. Uh, like purple thunder going on. And then we got Ant Man's big ass head, Giant Man, I should say. Uh, some people were making um, comparisons to Old Man Logan, where there's actually like a big, huge, dead body, Giant Man kind of thing. That is a uh, Easter egg for that. But yes, that is definitely that. And then you got all these people right here. You got all the you got all these players right here who have been in previous stuff. This right here is Toad for sure. You can see Toad right there, and of course you can see Kelly Hugh as Deathstrike right there, and uh, this guy, the red guy, I forgot his name, who was in a uh, first class, the red guy, Azriel, Az Azia, what's his name? I can't remember his name, but yeah, you're seeing just basically people that were in past X Men movies right here. Yeah, uh, Azazel, Azazel, that's right. I'm trying to look at my little cheat sheet right here because I was trying to remember exactly the names right here. But yeah, and then of course she was also in X-Men 3 and we've got some probably some other people right here. But yeah, there's going to be like a crazy opening that's going to be essentially like uh, like a Mad Max Fury Dude, what I'm talking about. Uh, of course, we've got him drinking right there. Arms out again. Look at those fucking arms, dude. Look at the fucking... Look, what, the, what is that? What is that? Testosterone, that's what that is. But look at that fucking vein going down his goddamn arm. Yeah. And then we got, of course, dog pull right there. Motion action sequence. Look at that. That's to I mean, yes, they're doing basically a Mad Max Fury Road action sequence. Not sure exactly who that is, but that's... <laughs> Who knows if you live or die? Let's fucking go. Ah, you guys know I hate that saying. It's like, really? You guys going to really have the catchphrase, let's fucking go? Again, I blame goddamn Tom Brady for the whole, let's go, let's fucking go. So, yeah. Let's fucking go. Ah. Yeah. Want to do some cocaine? Hey, cocaine. Okay, next. <laughs> the one thing that Feige said is off limits. What about Bolivian marching powder? They know all the slang terms. They have a list. Even snowboarding? Even disco dust. White girl interrupter? Even force bump. Do you want to build a snowman? Force yes. bump. That's the funny thing. All right. So there you go. There you go. It, it's a great trailer. It's a great trailer. Like I said, the, it, the color palette, of course, just has the Marvel Studios weird color palette. It just doesn't. I don't know. It's like, what are you guys doing with your color palette? That's the only thing that bugs me about it. It's like, you know, can we have a little bit, some, just a different kind of color palette? I don't know. That's just me, though. And then, of course, we have uh, some posters. We have some posters when it comes to the new movie, which are really cool posters. The reflection off the claws right there. And then, of course, the reflection off the swords right there. Beautiful posters. Good job, Marvel Studios. You have a good, you have some good posters right here. Congratulations. You do. You do. All right. So we're all good with that. Uh, no more trailers. I know. There's, uh, yeah, you're right, Chris. No more trailers because, yeah, we're, it's too many spoilers. We're just, we have to ignore them. There's probably going to be at least one more trailer because you got the teaser, you got the main trailer, and then you're going to have one more trailer, I'm sure, that explains more of the plot for sure. But, yeah, it's like one of those, like, probably don't want to watch that one if you want to go in um, without knowing a lot of stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's a good trailer. Uh, I was going to say something, and now I'm completely, oh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But, uh uh, appreciate you guys also, you know, when it comes to, uh, going to Twitch and everything like that, I'm still, I, I never really like got to know Twitch that much, but you know, but like I said, the Patreon is where everything is really just going right now. So, uh, like I said, every little bit helps if you want to do that. The Patreon's all provided. Well, I don't even have a link to that. Well, I'll look at my Twitter because this is not on YouTube. There's no links down below. Boy, still trying to get a load of that. But anyways, all right. Uh, where are we at right now? See, I got to mark it now because this is different. Box office, Civil War. Ended up getting the top spot again. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. 
didn't do so well. Yeah, Cavill is not having a good year when it comes to things. I, it sucks. I haven't seen it either. I haven't seen it. I wanted to see it. But Thursday is when all the madness happened when it came to my channel. So I wasn't quite in the mood to just go to a movie and sit in with a movie when there was a lot of things that were like just going, yeah, and I wanted to record the video and everything. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I really thought that that movie was actually going to grab an audience. It just seemed like it was perfect for that. But then at the same time, it only was released in the States or people in Canada that weren't even that it wasn't in theaters. So they were complaining. And I guess it's just more going to be streaming. I don't know. But it felt kind of, I was like, damn, I, I thought that would have captured an audience, but not quite. Civil War had a 56.4% drop, and it currently sits at a 44.9 million domestic, and now it's already starting to get international, so 49.4. Is there a budget on there yet? Kind of wondering what that budget is. But Civil War, number one again. And, of course, we had Abigail that also came out this weekend, which a lot of people are raving about. That made 15.2. I can't imagine this budget was all that high, and horror is just killing it right now. Godzilla Kong, it is creeping up to that half a billion dollars, so it'll probably get there this next weekend. But, yeah, ministry right here. Domestic, 8.9. Womp, womp. That kind of sucks. I just thought it would have got more of a. I just thought it would have caught got more of like a fucking audience. To be honest, I thought it would at least like start touching the twenty million, but I don't know, man. I tell you, but Abigail apparently was like a lot of people were uh, raving about that, but hopefully it finds life when it comes to streaming and everything. So, all right, where are we at here? All right, and then let's talk about some Zack Snyder because, well, he's been, you know, there's been a lot of talks about everything. And like I said, my little spiel at the beginning of the show was the fact that it's like uh, there's a lot of disappointment. There's a lot of uh, a lot of the haters are just out there really hating. And it's been interesting to see the response when it comes to everything and how they're handling Rebel Moon. And then, of course, we heard last week that they want to do four more movies. And then, of course, we're waiting for... Rebel Moon Part 3, and I know like Forbes released an article today that did talk about it, like, will they actually green light it? And because of certain things, and I'm just like, boy, I'm sure Zach is having fun with it. And I'm sure he just wants to make a small movie now because when it's sometimes, and that's what he's supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be making a small movie next. And I'm sure he's going to be very much looking forward to that because it's not going to have like these crazy expectations when it comes to these bigger movies. Well, let's listen to Zach right here on the uh, Happy, Sad, Confused podcast. Talk a little bit more about the director's cuts and that whole thing when it came to alternate universe. That whole thing. Director's cut is an alternate universe to yes. the PG-13, like right. literally. Because like I was saying, that even there's even moments where two characters are talking like this mm. that's in the PG-13, exact same dialogue, where this is a different take in the R-rated version than, I say the exact same words. Oh, interesting. But it's it's different take than in the PG-13. That's how that's how in the weeds we are right. with the two versions of the movie. Because like maybe in the R-rated version, like Sophia's saying a line that's slightly more emotional in the R-rated version than it is in the PG-13. Because what happens is in the in the R-rated versions of the movie, everything is amplified because the R-rated versions of the movie have a slightly more satirical, like mm -hmm. the PG-13 movies end up being pretty earnest. Um, sure. Because they don't have sort of sex and violence to like, to over the top them. Yeah, so yeah. that in the R-rated versions, because the violence is so over the top and the sex is so over the top that you sort of, the tone changes, right. you know, because you're like, wow, I'm in this, heavy metal version of, right. of this movie really, really in it. And I think that that it was sort of unachievable in the PG 13. And so you, so we really doubled down on the sort of earnestness and sort of, and not to say that those scenes don't exist in PG in R rate because they do, yeah. but they're almost more over the top because I kind of was, it's just, it's funner. 
You yeah, know, it's yeah, just yeah. crazier. Everything's stupid <laughs> uh, in a great way. You know? Everything's stupid in a great way. It's a good way to uh, explain it right there. You know, so it's, it, it, it allows the comment on the genre to be a little bit more obvious. Right. Where I feel like in the PG-13, it's just more straightforward. Like this is a actioner with the sci-fi elements and all this things. It's really like, let's go. Yeah. Movie time, you know. So the way I'm looking at it when it comes to this and even talking with other people, it's just the fact that it's like, all right, so, I mean, there's always just, again, we have to wait till after these director's cuts come out before we start. I mean, again, people are just, you know, losing their minds all over the place because everything's just instant gratification kind of uh, a sense to it. And the way I look, I'm, I'm just waiting to see like what exactly this is all about. And I've always been, I've been like, okay, we'll see if this all works out. Now, obviously I want to, I, I prefer getting all those first but at the same time i'm like all right so to get his crazy movie that he's talking about where where it's so satir it's more satirical it's over the top when it comes to the sex and violence it's like no other studio was actually going to be like yeah go ahead unless he was going to cut the budget half in half and a24 maybe would allow him to do something like that but the fact that it's like okay but no you have to give us this right here so it, it reminds me of like, uh, you know, uh, Captain America Civil War when it came to Hawkeye and Black Widow fighting each other. They weren't exactly fighting. They were pulling the punches. And he was essentially, I guess you could say that Zach's kind of doing like the same thing where it's like, OK, if, if I'm going to have to give you this generic run by the numbers sci fi adventure movie, I'm just going to put that out there. And then, but my version is just going to be, I'm going to make it so drastically different that people are going to like lose their minds on how different it actually is. And he's really selling it like that. And it's going to be interesting again to see people's responses. But we also have something else too on another podcast where he talks about how this is how different they're actually going to be, how the uh, director's cuts are going to be, where in fact, the little subtitles are not going to actually be the same for the director's cuts. He sort of that those movies on um, they actually have different titles than what? the PG-13. Like the, the names of the movies, this Rebel Moon, you know, part 1 and then a different name rather than Scar Giver or Child of Fire, you know what I mean? It's like they have <laughs> they have different names. But so that's what I mean by like you it's a cool, it, it, we, we, I feel like we set up a smart machine to, to produce these, these, all these movies. But from the filmmaking standpoint, it was really, it was quite, um, we got in the groove with it pretty, pretty amazingly. So it was fun. Because my script supervisor was not happy. She, she, <laughs> she was the most, she was the most. Working very hard. Yeah. She had to track everything for the tuber. Like, oh, you got to make sure they get a, we get, they have to say that dialogue for PG-13 now. Make sure they say, you know, they can't say fuck every five minutes. They got to like now. So, yeah. So there was a lot of that. <laughs> the poor script supervisor. Holy crap. Can you imagine trying to uh, handle all that? Holy Lord. But again, this is like something new. This is something different. And we'll see if it works out. I'm just telling people out there that are like that, that aren't having fun with this just let's just be a little patient and see if this all, whole thing ends up working out when we actually see these director cuts but yes they're going to have different titles it's not going to be the child of fire or the scar giver so that was something new that was revealed today and uh had something else too what was the other zach snyder thing oh yeah well zach snyder well you know <sighs> I know people, when it comes to the fanboy wars, they're not going to like this. And I'm sure they just do that whole thing. He doesn't really mean it. He doesn't really mean it. But, you know, obviously, Zack Snyder and James Gunn, I'm not. He's, he said on the Vox stream that, yeah, you know, he's a buddy. But I'm not saying that they're like constantly like once a week having dinner or going out or constantly talking on the phone. They're not that. But they also don't hate each other. But. Zack Snyder is pretty excited to see James Gunn's DCU. If the characters are treated with reverence and the mythology and the mythologically uh, credit, uh, correct method, well, I, I can't even say that. I'm not even going to try. When I'm done, when then I'm down. I'm in. I'm pretty excited. We're going to get Superman pretty soon and we'll see what that's like. Mythologically. 
in the moment I couldn't read it. Mythologically, that's what I was uh, trying to pronounce right there. But yeah, so, uh, and then of course we had James Gunn. He actually uh, also, when somebody asked, uh, when, it, when, when it came to Zack Snyder, James Gunn had this response when it came to Zack uh, being excited for the DCU. I didn't, he didn't see it, but I knew it already because he's texted me. He's been incredibly supportive throughout this process. Of course, professional. They're both being professional. Of course, James Gunn reached out to him to talk to him about things. And then, yeah, there's like some, some of that's going on. Of course, there's going to just be people that say he's a liar and all that because that's just the way it is. And everybody has these weird bias and these weird, they want to pin these two together. And it's like, no, that's not the case. They are very much like respect each other and, Zach is like doing his thing and is looking forward to it because he's again, he's like, like how a lot of people are. It's like, okay, I want to see what you have to do with these characters. I handled the characters for a bit. Now let's see how, what, what you do with the characters. Let's see how that works. There you go. Good. Good. But I know, yeah, this is fanboys out there going like, yeah, he doesn't really mean that behind the scenes. Sure. I'm like, maybe he doesn't. Who the fuck cares? What are we trying to do here, folks? Those same people are not, like in rebel moon and think that fucking Chris Terrio and Larry Fong are the missing pieces. And they want to, they, and it's so funny too, because I'll see them too. It's like, Oh yeah. He's got to like cast Ben Affleck in, in part three or Henry Cavill. It's like these, the, there are fans out there that are just wanting to just read. They wish that everybody who is in BVS and, and Zack Snyder's just like end up showing up in rebel moon. And then Chris Terrio comes in to write some stuff. And Larry Fong is doing the cinematography. And I mean, yes, they got Patrick Totopoulos that might be coming back, but everybody just wants like that whole thing. And it's like DJ VFX guy was already like, he already came back to work on the VFX. So, I mean, there's partially going to be some of that right there, but let's relax a little bit here, folks. You know, it's not that, you know, the respect is there. The respect is there. Oh, good Lord. Okay, let's get to Twitter questions. All right, so here we go. Twitter questions. See what you guys have to say over there in the Twitter sphere. All right, we got Eric. Hey, Dave, here's the YouTube wising up to and compensating. On, yes. So uh, good news. Like, okay, when it comes to uh, the, the little bit of good news that was today, even though I still don't have my channel back, is uh, when 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 channels are terminated, it even said in the uh, guidelines, if a channel is terminated, they can withhold payouts, like the monthly payout. So I was like, oh, okay, now is around the time that I would get the monthly payout. So I did get the monthly payout from last month. So that's a good sign that they didn't withhold that. That's good. Uh, so yeah, so there was that the little bit of uh, light at the end of the tunnel, which was that, I guess you could say. Also pleasantly surprised with uh, Twilight of God's announcement. Yes, that was also mentioned as well, uh, that it's actually going to be coming out this fall. And they're just kind of, yeah, so that was all announced. Great to hear that Zach and Netflix have a full speed ahead to the next project once the current one's finished. So yeah. There was that mention, too, of Twilight. Twilight of the Gods is coming out this fall. Devon Wooter, hey, Dave, do you think Doctor Strange will be in uh, Deadpool 3? Well, we saw a portal in that trailer, so there's a possibility. Because both Deadpool, yeah, jump to the portal. And I really like Rebel Moon Part 2. I don't know why people hate on it. And do you have a favorite scene from Rebel Moon? Yeah, Jimmy, the Jimmy, the Jimmy heroic, like, entrance in his scene was uh, fantastic. That was my favorite scene. Mr. Nobody. Hey, Dave, question number one. I can't wait for Superman. My anticipation is rising. The Deadpool and Wolverine trailer was pretty sick. Will this be the last we see of Hugh Jackman? Nah. I think they'll do uh, Secret Wars. I wonder if they can keep Jackman and introduce a new Wolverine that way uh, Jackman can be Old Man Logan. Well, he kind of already was Old Man Logan with Logan. Question number two, I think the villain in Professor is Professor X's uh, twin sister, Cassandra Nova. That's what everybody is kind of saying, that it is her. So, But then it's kind of wondering because it looked like there's a wheelchair in that one part. Darkness Under the Wind, Dave. Question number one, would you want the finale of this first saga of the DCU to be a 
two part Justice League movie like Infinity War and Endgame or just have it as one movie? Eh, I mean, it just depends on whatever. I don't know. I really don't have a preference when it comes to that. Question two, do you think we will not see Cassandra Nova again after Deadpool and Wolverine? I kind of wonder if we won't even see her after the first scene. P.S. I hope YouTube realizes they have a problem and fix uh, these issues and you get your channel back. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And of course, thank you, uh, Mr. Chris Balga, for uh, promoting the Patreon. Like I said, that's where, you know, but, you know, obviously we got Twitch, we got uh, Twitter and everything. So, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I was hoping I was going to get some kind of response today when it comes to all that. But um, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to have to start, uh, start uh, bugging some some things here because I, I i just i just don't i'm like what did i there's no warning and i don't see any community guidelines even you know my friends were looking at the community guidelines going and the only thing that was like well is it because you had this second channel that you created like seven eight years ago because you couldn't upload it was that the reason are they like putting in a policy that wasn't existing way back then that doesn't even again that doesn't even make sense and I'm like, I know, I'm like, I don't even use that channel anymore or anything like that. And I wasn't trying to like go, oh, I don't know. It's all just weird. But like I said, there's other means and the show is always going to go on, guys. The show shall go on. Show is going to, yeah. And it's not going to go anywhere. And I appreciate you guys sticking around. And the Patreon is just where all the stuff is going. I updated all the tiers and everything i will be posting a, a clip tonight as well and i'll be posting this stream on there so then it's easily accessible and i can you can find it easily over there too because you know sometimes you know with twitter it's weird twitch i don't even understand it when it comes to that I've, again i don't get twitch and how you rewatch things i don't think you can so i think it's more like tv it's like you didn't catch it so sorry i don't know maybe there is a way i don't know i just remember people are like, hey, i can't rewatch it i don't know but Twitter is like, you know, it's a little Twitter still figuring out their thing, too. So I will be, you know, reposting this as well as, you know, the audio version. Just everything is going on Patreon. And you subscribe for free. You just won't get it as early, you know. And just check out the tiers, the do, uh, the, 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 the package tiers or whatever they want. On. Anyways, guys, appreciate you clicking in. Follow me on all the stuff, too, as well as the Patreon, and do all that. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens in the next couple of days. Uh, DC Fanimated, we're, we'll be doing, uh, we'll be streaming tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Scott and I will be uh, finally back. Like I said, we we're trying to figure out, because his work schedule has been changing, and just trying to figure all that out. But, yeah, we'll be talking tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific time on the episode Prototype. So look forward to that. And then, of course, I'll see you guys Wednesday. Hopefully, fingers, toes, balls crossed. That's, I get it, I get the channel reinstated and everything just kind of gets back to normal. Gets back to normal, huh? That's what we want. All right, guys. Love you. And uh, I got to find that. Talk to you later. Later.